Hello and welcome to The Wow Show, an hour full of stories from and for truck drivers on the road. We're going to have fun saying thank you for who you are and what you do as drivers. And we're going to talk to some people who know their stuff so that we can learn more. My name is David Binyacek. I'm your host. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to show number one, numero one. Exciting stuff. You're going to love um, our guest today. When I look at what some of his friends wrote about him, um, I see the word pioneer. I see meant to be behind the wheel of a class A truck. I see icon, legend. I'm lucky enough to call him friend. Uh, and so here's some clues. We're going to play the clue game to see if you can guess who he is because he's pretty well known. Clue number one. He comes from a legendary family, synonymous with transport in Western Canada. Clue number two, he was awarded the 2009 Truck News Canadian Owner Operator of the Year Award down at the Fergus Truck Show that year. Clue number three, he was the January driver and his 1997 Freightliner FL120 truck was the January truck in the first ever Wild Trucks calendar back in 2008. Some other clues, 18 Wheels of Christmas, Support Your Troops, Veterans. Uh, I don't know if you guessed it already, but I am so honored uh, to have Michael Motor Rosenau with us on the show today. Motor, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me on your show, David. And thank you for what you bring to support our, our industry and the people that are in it. Yeah, and I, I have to, I'm sitting here with my cup of coffee, and uh, and it reminds me of 15 years ago, Motor and I were sitting in a uh, Tim Hortons in the Industrial Park in Calgary, and, and I have to thank Motor because he's 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 partly responsible for the Wow Trucks calendar that celebrates Canadian drivers every year. I had left my job at Shell where I worked with transport for 15 years, and I had met a beautiful girl who carried a camera, and so I was getting into photography. Uh, and Motor uh, kind of hinted. He said, well, have you ever thought about doing a calendar? And, uh, and it kind of planted that seed. And 15 years later, I mean, wow, look at where we're at. It's been a ton of fun. It's been great celebrating. And this is show number one. And who knows what, you know, how many are down the road 15 years from now, what this show will look like. But I couldn't imagine starting it uh, with uh, or with anyone uh, except for you, Motor. So uh, this is uh, this is awesome. There's a phrase that says you are with who you hang out with, and not just myself, but the ton of people who know you would say that uh, as listeners, we're just fortunate to hang out with you because when you hang out with Motor, he just kind of makes you better. Uh, and so what I want to do today is I want to let people hear your story, but I also want to let people hear you because you've got a ton of experience, you know your stuff, you're an incredible inspiration to the people around you. Um, and so I, I, I look forward to this show and listeners, uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, Motor, let's get going with your story. Now they say that there's something in a name and your family name is Rosenau. And uh, it's pretty, Rosenau, yeah. yeah, it's pretty well synonymous with trucking in Western yeah. Canada. One of the largest, if not the largest private carrier in Western Canada. But here's the scoop and here's what I love about you as I know you through the shows and interacted with you outside of the shows, family's important to you and friends important to you. Loyalty is a name or that are an adjective that I would describe you uh, very much as, as being loyal to the people around you. But no one could accuse you of writing the coattails of your family name to your success. Michael Motor Rosenau is successful because he's done it his own way. So my first question is this, Talk about uh, growing up in the Rosenau family. Talk about growing into being a trucker. I kind of laugh because I'm going to ask you, did you even have a choice? <laughs> Was there ever a moment where you were thinking about doing something else? Uh, tell us about Never. life in your family. Go for it. Well, I, I was cursed with it for sure. And I say <laughs> that in a good way. But I mean, my grandfather started the company in 57 and the whole family was involved and I mean, I grew up in the industry and it was an industry that I, I mean, I couldn't help but love. I mean, just even riding with my dad as a little kid, I mean, he made truck and fun, you know, nice. there's that, that song that you make love and fun. Well, my dad made truck and fun. And I mean, I had two brothers and a sister and we all had to go with that, you know, so we all had to take our turns, but it was just, you know, he, 
he made it the adventure it was and I just I couldn't have been blessed with a better father and you know he's he was the guy that I looked up to he was my mentor and I mean of course his brothers and sister in the family business I learned lots from them but he was the oldest so he he pretty much you know they grew up around him too so yeah they learned and were mentored by him too right yes so, but yeah no I uh so I was very lucky sorry there was never a chance that you were going to do anything else transport's been in your no. blood yeah I love it what age did you start uh legally yeah or illegally on the prairies it's uh it's a kind of a thing to start when you're 12. <laughs> but... no, I, 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 was, I was driving the trucks when i could reach the pedals around the yard washing trucks and bringing trailers into the shop and washing them and yeah uh i think my first road trip by myself i was probably 14 or 15 and grandpa the uh had me in the, it was summer so i was working in the yard doing the doing the cleanup in the yard at uh, Wagner Road there in Edmonton. And they, uh, Grandpa says, go out and clean up the yard. So I loaded up a truck with all the garbage in the yard. And when I went into the office and told him it was all done, he says, well, take it out to the dump. Well, of course, the dump was across town yes. on the north end of Edmonton. And I was on the south side. And I'm like, um, Grandpa, I don't have my driver's license, just my learners. He says, he tips his glasses down and he goes, well, then don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> that is a prairie attitude. I love it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Back then, you pretty much got a hat slap if you got caught. I don't think you could get away with something like that today. No, times have changed. But you know what? Uh, yeah. Those are those are great memories. And, uh, I, yeah. you know, you're probably not alone. I think that's the, the story of many a trucker on the prairies where they drove on the farm or they, you know, but they were driving when they were young. And uh, and so that's pretty cool. Now, um, I used to ship for my dad even when I was a little kid before I could even drive. I was shifting the gears for him. You know, I'd watch his foot. And when I went on the clutch, I know I was doing the next gear, right? So would you say your dad's the, been the biggest mentor in your life when it comes to trucking? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he's my... My mentor, my dad, my best friend, for sure, yeah. Cool. Well, I want to read uh, just uh, kind of a, a kudos from a friend of yours. Uh, and uh, and so this is uh, from uh, Gordy Cooper, Smoking Gun, world record holder on the quarter mile. It says, always meant to be behind the wheel of a Class A truck, motor has lived and breathed a true trucker's creed with integrity and honesty. Uh, we are all proud of Motors all in participation with his tribute to Canada's military veterans and the 18 Wheels of Christmas speaks volumes about his support for honorable programs. I am proud to call Mike Rosenau my friend and pleased to see him excel at a profession that suits him to a T. Now, I never knew, uh, Gordy talked about the fact that you drove with him in his 57 Kenworth out to the coast to uh, Pro Trucker Magazine's first ever BC Big Rig Weekend. I have pictures of it, and I have, can you see that on your camera? There? I can see that on your camera, and you know what? I'm going to put it up on your Wow Trucks profile. Um, the tattoo on your arm, tell us about it. Oh, that's Gord's 57 Needlenose Kenworth, and that's the one we hauled, the smoking gun, to the race out at Mission. Before he had the enclosed trailer, we were hauling the smoking gun on a high boy. Yes. Yeah. So we ran from Calgary to Mission with that old 57 Kenworth and the smoking gun on the back. That is so sweet. Gotta love it. He said you were yeah. pretty proud to show off the tattoo when you got out to the coast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got, a, got a picture of me giving him a chokehold with the tattoo or whatever. Yeah, I remember that one. And I'll put that on your profile as well. For our listeners, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Motor's story. I really want you to hear from Motor. Uh, so what we're going to do is if you go to wowtrucks.com backslash motor, M-O-T-O-R, uh, then you're going to see a lot about um, um, Mike's, um, everything that we couldn't cover uh, in today's interview. We're going to put in the profile and you can catch up on on uh, this, uh, this awesome dude. Uh, so on that tattoo, there's the word motor. Where'd you get the nickname? So... My initials are MTR, and I was on a bike run, actually. We were doing a poker run in Lloydminster, and a friend of mine and I were playing a video game, and I got first place, so I punched in my initials MTR, 
and he seen my initials and he goes, Motor. <laughs> so, I mean, he called me that name and I'm living in Lloydminster at the time and I, I couldn't get rid of that name if I tried. But not that I'd want to because I kind of really like it now, but <laughs> that's how the name came about. We were playing a video game and the guy that I was racing, he called me Motor. So you got it. And everybody suits me. So I guess I'll just go with it. Yeah, I think I, I, I hear you called Motor the more than I hear you called Mike or Michael. And uh, and so the name is stuck, and it's a good one. It's synonymous with what you do. And it's funny because my wife says the same thing. She says, I can't even call you by your Michael because it just doesn't sound great. <laughs> so Lindsay calls you Motor too? Yes. That's awesome. Where do you, where'd yeah. you get your, where, I mean, you're, you're a passionate guy. Uh, you're an independent guy. Like I said, that you know, Motor, you did it your way. Where does that independence come from? Does it come from your dad? Does it come from your family? Where does that independence uh, kind of warrior streak in you that we all love? Where does it come from? No, it does. It comes from my family. Like I, I, I do it my way, but I, I can't take credit for all these things that I've done because of the, you know, my uncles, my aunt, my father. Like grow, growing up and working at the family business. I mean. The 18 Wheels of Christmas, that wasn't something I started, but I joined on. I wanted to be a part of and help out with to support our troops. Uh, that was a campaign that was put on by Rosenau, and I wanted to be a part of that. And they, you know, my Uncle Tim, he said, well, go ahead and get your truck deckled. That was when I had the blue and white one because it, yep. it wasn't so many colors. And I was talking about maybe deckling my truck to match. and. Uncle Tim said, well, go in and get it done and we'll take care of it. And they did. And I mean, I changed it a bit over the years, to, but from what I originally did, but it's still, you know, the same thing. And it rolls it out to this day. They're still sporting the, the support our troops trailer and it's running all over the place. And That's awesome. Unfortunately, I'm not with them now. I'm out in the Okanagan. So You're in paradise, Motor. That's, yeah, that's just a kudos Absolutely. to your intelligence. You're a wise man. My dad was retired in Kelowna for 14 years. And every time I went there, I said, why wasn't I born here? <laughs> it's, and uh, I've been to that perch up in the hills that you have. Uh, that is your home with Lindsay. And, and, uh, and I'm just, I'm happy for you. It truly is paradise. Uh, well, we're, and, actually, we're in Lake Country now. Have you? Yeah, yeah. We're in Lake Country now. You bet. Oh, so you're in the middle of the vineyards. Yeah, well, doesn't matter where you are in the Okanagan, you're in the middle of the vineyards. <laughs> yes, that is sweet. That is sweet. Yeah. If our listeners haven't visited the Okanagan and done a wine tour, it's uh, it should be kind of a must thing to do because uh, it's just a, yeah. a, a great country or a great part of our country. Awesome. Yeah. So like I said, a lot of it, like all, all of what I've done is because of where I came from, right? Yeah. It's, you know, and even like today, Rosanelle is sporting lots of support, like the the plot for dad, they do the, uh, uh, they've got a truck and a trader deckled for plot for dad for the prostate cancer. They've got the breast cancer trader. I don't know what else they've got going on right now, but they're definitely into community. And like my cousin Ken now, he's just, you know, him and the crew there, they're running with the ball and they're still up about community support and yeah. taking care of the people and the people that take care of them, I guess. So, yeah. Like I said, we all come from that background and the people that we, you know, our family are the ones that instilled in us the people we are today. Yeah. And, and yeah. That's, that's what people know you for. That's what people appreciate yeah. you for. Um, it's, uh, and you know what, it, it's, it's selfless, but it's also selfish because I get it. When you, when you spend a life supporting others, that's a life well spent. Yeah. Like as you, you, yeah. you tend to get back way more than you've ever given. And it's not why you do it. And it's not why you do it. And I know that it's your heart. Uh, but it's so rewarding when you live in that space. So if we were to play. It, it, it is, you're absolutely right there because it makes you feel so good about the person you are. Helping the people that are less fortunate or whatever. Or just being there to help somebody through a, a tough time. Anything like that. I mean, you feel better about yourself. Yeah. So realistically, you're you're getting more than you're giving really if you think about it that yeah. way because you know that's a motor so, truth yeah absolutely i'll vouch you on that one yeah. 
So uh, just to, to confirm, play a little game of where are they now? Uh, I know you for your two trucks. I know you for the Freightliner that was in the calendar, the blue and white one. And I know you for the support your troops. Uh, where are those rigs now? You said uh, that Rose now still pulling the trailer. Uh, where are those trucks? So where would they find them? Okay, well, the, the troop truck I still own, it pulls my fifth wheel. I've got my fifth wheel deckled to match. Yep. And I still do a lot with the veterans out here and stuff like that. But uh, my, uh, it's, I got to correct you on the color. It's turquoise, green, and white. Thank you. The, I am corrected. And, gonna, yeah, and, and I, I got to tell you the story behind that color, okay? So if that's all right, do we have time? Yeah, we do. Go for it. Okay. So that color, so my grandfather was always a Dodge man. And the original pickup, the original Dodge pickup, he had, I think, a Ford first, but when he got his new Dodge pickup or whatever, 57, it came in the Dodge 56 DeSoto green, which is a turquoise green. Yeah. So it's been the color from pretty much the conception of the company. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And it's got its roots and we know where they're from. And you know what, when you see the truck coming down the road, that's for sure. That's awesome. Well, Motor, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break right now. Uh, let uh, the listeners uh, listen to some tunes. But when we come back, I, I really want to find out more about and delve into uh, letting people hear from Motor. Uh, your motto, motto, if you had a branded hat, and you might have this hat or this shirt, is if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Yeah, if it don't shine, it ain't mine. Yeah, I, I want to explore that because that really kind of exemplifies who you are. Uh, so we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, welcome back. We're with Michael Motor Rosenau. Uh, we're having fun finding out a little bit more about his story. This uh, gentleman who's been the 2009 Truck News Canadian Owner Operator of the Year. Uh, and, uh, and Motor, it was great to hear kind of a little bit about your roots and a little bit about your family. Uh, it helps us understand kind of the, the guy that people appreciate today. Uh, for this next little piece, I, I want to talk about your motto. If it don't shine, it ain't mine. And that's, <laughs> that's definitely true about your trucks because they've always shone. And it's been a pleasure just photographing them and, and telling their story. Uh, but it speaks to your attitude. And, and attitude is, is kind of what's inside of you pouring through your skin. <laughs> and, uh, and so tell us about that. Where, 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 where did that motto come from? And, uh, and, you know, how do you, I mean, I, I think I know how you live it, but how do you try to live it as you live your life? Oh, well, you know, how to keep yourself clean. <laughs> so do, do you recommend showering once twice or three times a day or once twice three uh, times a week what day is it again <laughs> <laughs> no i'm a once a day guy yeah, yeah. Um, no a, a friend of mine tom johns uh back in the image days there he uh I said that to him and he kind of chuckled about it. He actually went out and he got me the decals made for my, uh, my green and white, the, the day cap. Yeah. yeah. And I put them on there and, uh, that's pretty much, you know, I got quite a few things that I got from my dad, but that was one that I think I heard him say or whatever and stole it. So, yeah, I love that motor. I, uh, when I was reading your article and I'll put a link on your profile, uh, to the Truck News article on when you won Owner Operator of the Year. Uh, I loved what it said. It said a big reason why you won it was because, you know, obviously you took pride in putting shine on the road, but you also knew how to run a business. And, uh, yeah. and that's important because if you, if you can't sustain with the dollars what you're doing, then the shine disappears in a hurry. Uh, and I, it's a tough line. I mean, I encourage uh, you know, young drivers, especially getting into the industry, I, a lot of them are, are, are kind of, uh, you know, Google eyed about the shine that's on the road and that's what they want. But there has to be a balance because I've seen some guys get themselves into financial trouble and, and go bankrupt because they were all shine and no business. Um, talk from your experience, where's, where's the balance between those things? And, uh, and how did that work for you? Well, it's, excuse me, sorry. Uh, it's funny you ask that. Uh, I don't remember when, but Truck News did an article on maintenance and 
and asked questions similar to that, and they actually got the article, but um, I, I started with something I could afford to buy, and I fixed it up. Like, you start off with a truck you can afford. Don't break the bank when you get into it. Yeah. You know, make sure you can afford the payments. If you have a slow month, you still have to pay bills. So yeah. make sure you buy something you can afford. And it might not be the blingy truck you want, but down the road as you're making better money and or you have a little extra, you can buy some chrome here and chrome there. I mean, the truck, my first truck, it started off as a plain, plain truck. Yeah. Like it was a it was a retired Rosen out truck, is what it was. I found it. Uh, in Saskatoon yeah and uh, so what I did is I bought the truck and I slowly as I could afford it I put the blame on it yes you know it did look it took me quite a few years before I started you know winning trophies at the shows and yeah I mean it was pretty much a basic truck I polished it up and it looked a lot better than it did when I bought it and I just took the time but I didn't break the bank to do it because I still had to pay bills and you know, you, you got to keep, you know, you got to keep maintenance in mind. The truck has to run. Yes. So your r &M is a big factor there. So you got to make sure you got money put away or you're able to buy a set of tires or whatever. Like it's not cheap. And the bigger they are, the more expensive they are. So Definitely. So a rhyme's coming in my head as I'm listening to you and it's just kind of off the cuff. But what you're basically saying is when you, when you can afford the cash, it's okay to go ahead and buy the splash. And, uh, right. and that yeah, might be, <laughs> it might be the motto that, uh, yeah. that uh, people should uh, run with in, in doing that. And I think that's great advice because yeah, if you can't uh, sustain your business, then none of it matters. And, uh, and finding yeah. that balance is so important for drivers of any age, but especially uh, for young kids uh, coming into the, uh, into the industry. So, hey, Motor, we've got uh, someone on the line that's uh, kind of a surprise, but I think you know pretty well. I think in the past you've called him a mentor of yours, and, and he's a wily veteran of the road in Western Canada. He's <laughs> also been in the Wow Trucks calendar. Uh, Kim Wiley, how are you doing? Greetings. How is everybody? Uh -huh. Good to hear from you guys. <laughs> awesome. Good to hear from you, Wiley. Motor's got a <laughs> smile that's going from ear to ear. So he's, oh, right he's happy to hear you. Uh, Kim. Brother, uh, brother, how are you? I'm good, my friend. And you? Excellent. Excellent. Great day. You're looking yeah. well. <laughs> so how are you? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Far, so good. Right. Confession. Uh, you know, while you hear the audio on this particular show, we also do video on Zoom. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes technology doesn't, it doesn't, uh, isn't our friend. And so um, no. Kim was having a little bit of trouble with the Zoom audio or video coming through, but it's no big deal. He's linked in an audio and that's great. Um, Kim, you've got a ton of experience with motor. Uh, he's, you know, probably one of your brothers and vice versa. Uh, tell yes. us, tell us about the man yeah. and, and, and how you see him and what he means to the community. Go ahead and share. Well, his ongoing support for the veterans and the Canadian Armed Forces is, is truly inspiring. Uh, his, well, he, he continues to promote the positive image of the Armed Forces and the veterans, which is, which is really nice. I don't think they really get enough credit. I mean, uh, they are a special group of people that keep us and Canada safe. So yep. that we can really enjoy our freedoms. Yes. Right? And and I think uh, a lot more people need to realize what Motor has really done for the veterans with his ongoing support of the rolling uh, barrage uh, that uh, Scott Casey has organized. Uh, well, there's so many other people involved with that, too. It's re it was really nice to... to uh, actually sit down and have a chat with Mortar the last time that they rode through here and with Scott too, because they spent about three hours in Humboldt, which was really nice to have those guys show up. Yes. It was really a, it was really a good afternoon, actually. Yeah, it was nice yeah. surprise to see you and Rick too. That was awesome. Yeah. You guys came over there. Yeah, no, it was, it was really a good afternoon. We talked about old times. I think yeah. the first time I met Mortar is that, uh, when I worked for Hard Wilkening Transport out of Regina, we would load out Apso's warehouse and they had uh, 
a great number of Alberta carriers that would come over there and load and, and uh, Rainbow had Northern Alberta. So that was, it was Motor and a couple other guys that would come over here, come over there and then they would load all day and then they would leave at supper time to do their overnight runs to Northern Alberta. And I'm like, holy man, you guys like, boy, that was a lot of work, but that's where, I, that's where, I think that's where I first met you was over at Essa's warehouse there, I believe when you worked for Rainbow, but that's yeah. going back. Yeah, that's what? a long time ago. Yeah, I don't think we want to actually tell you, tell everybody how long ago that was because then we uh, reveal our true ages here, right? Well, <laughs> you know? your, your picture isn't in there, Wiley, but I, uh, I got the old uh, silver beard going on here, so. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's lots of silver coming out here. Well, actually, I'm losing most of it now, so yeah. <laughs> That's why they make hats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, bad hair days, right? That's right. Yeah, so, yeah. No, it's, it's been quite a few years, and we don't get to visit often that much anymore, but, you that's know. Like it's farther west. Yeah, no, that, yeah, actually, yeah, you know. Uh, actually, my uh, Shelly's got relatives down there. She's got an uncle and an aunt in uh, Kelowna, and she's got a nephew in Vernon. Oh, nice. So yeah, so yeah, so next time that we're down there, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I come out and have a visit with you. Well, that's what motor is all about is is the visit. Um, Kim, I was talking to another yeah. Saskatchewan trucker, Tie Jam, uh, Tyler Rogers, and oh, yeah. uh, and I didn't know you knew a motor. And uh, when I mentioned oh, yeah. that I was doing your interview, he goes. Oh, that dude is awesome. He says, whenever I'm in Kelowna, he takes me to lunch and he does this and he does that. Hey, uh, so yeah. when we come back from the break, um, uh, Kim, please stay on the line. Uh, we're going to play a little sure. game called Motor Moments, where I'm going to read out a phrase related to the industry. And uh, I'm going to invite both Motor and Kim uh, to kind of give me their thoughts on the phrase of the day. So enjoy the break uh, and we'll see you back here in just a little bit. Well, welcome back to the WOW Show. We're having a great discussion with Mike Motor Rosenau and a good friend of his now, Kim Wiley, has joined us from Saskatchewan. Many of you know him as well. He's very well known in the industry and a big legend as well. Um, it's time to play Motor Moments. So gentlemen, I'm gonna invite you both to participate. I'm gonna say a phrase and I just want you to tell me what's the first thing that comes to your head? What piece of advice do you have on it? What are, what are your thoughts around it? Uh, so phrase number one, Driver shortage. Go for it. You want that one, Kim? Oh, <laughs> uh, driver shortage. Uh, yeah, that's been an ongoing concern for quite a few years. I don't know if, if it's a, a driver shortage or a shortage of quality drivers, maybe. That yeah. would be the, yeah, uh, shortage of experienced drivers. Right, but I mean, if if you don't get into the industry and get the experience, how can be classified as an experienced driver? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a big issue. Sounds like we could do a whole show on that one. Oh, oh, that, oh, no doubt. No. Yep. <laughs> okay. Phrase number two: owner operator or company driver? Uh, well. <laughs> yeah, they both, have, they both have their perks and they both have their uh, disadvantages, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think I enjoyed being an owner operator a lot. But when I went back to being a company driver, you don't have the stress and the worry of, you know, the truck breaking down and having to get it running right away. Because if you work for a larger company, the truck breaks down, you jump into another one, you're still getting paid. As an owner operator, you're sitting at home and you're not making any money. So, I mean, there's yeah. lots of pros and lots of cons. It's a hard question to answer. Yep. I know, yep. I know Kim, Kim probably agrees with me on this. It's nice having your own iron. Yes. You know, you don't it have is, to yeah. worry about somebody jumping in it and, you know, smoking in it or throwing their right. flower seeds on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of guys probably think that's trivial, but. To, yeah myself and i'm sure kim agrees that that's you know a big thing respect for your fellow driver you know you right you got a yeah. clean truck put it back as clean as you possibly can there's some days maybe you know 
the guy doesn't have time to wash it the way it was when he took it out, but you know, do it yeah. best you can. So, all right, yeah. so, uh, you, you, go ahead, Kevin. I, I'm uh, as an owner operator, well, I bought my first truck in 1992. So, I mean, you, you drive for five days and you always got to work on the truck for one. That's guaranteed, right? Usual preventive maintenance, right? Yes. You know, and I know company drivers that, you know, come in on Friday, turn the key off and come back Monday and jump on the truck and leave. Like they don't do nothing to the truck. They can if, if they feel like it, but you know, the company's got mechanics for doing all that stuff. So as a company driver, you have a little bit more freedom, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not battling with the truck, but you know, I've, I've got two trucks and I've had both trucks broke down at the same time. So <laughs> that's not a, that's not a good issue to go through. Right? No. But, you know, it's, uh... And the pockets yeah, have to be your own. Points in, yeah, it's good points, bad points on both sides, right? I, I've you got it. Both, okay. You know, and yeah. Got it. You know. Next phrase, rate, <laughs> rates. Go for it. Rates. Oh, rates? Yes. Oh, rates. Oh, well, uh, geez, you know, uh, you'd always like more, but you're not necessarily going to get more. Uh, you know, once in a while, a certain situation will come up where somebody says, yeah, uh, they're willing to pay you to run empty. And I never turn that opportunity down. What? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Okay, if they're willing to pay me to run empty, yes, I'm gone. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's good I'm advice, gonna, Kevin. I'm not going to sit there. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and uh, and uh, argue with them. Okay, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Right? So yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah. So, but I mean. Uh, See, we're on a fluctuating fuel surcharge. Price of fuel goes up, the fuel surcharge goes up, right? So you are compensated. Yes. You know, plus so, tarping, plus drops, plus, you know, plus this, plus that. Yeah. Good so advice, it, Cam. It, 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 it works out into my favor, usually 90% uh, of the time. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to be indexed to what's happening. Okay. Last, uh, last word yeah, is actually yeah. uh, uh, aimed at motor. Uh, for this last phrase, and uh, I'm going to get him to respond. Uh, but the last phrase is this, Lindsay Rosenau. Oh. <laughs> well, I am everything. <laughs> she's my support, my rock, you know, she's definitely, you know, she, she means the world to me, and she's supportive in all I do, and we've got her bike all deckled up for the military support, so when we're out riding, she gets all the attention with the military support, nice. which is good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, and, cool. and Kim, you know yeah. the you know the importance of finding the right spouse, and you've got a gem as well. Oh. Tell us about your wife. Oh, geez, yeah. Like if I didn't have Shelly's support and love, uh, I I don't know where I'd be. To tell you the truth, right? Uh, Massive support behind me, you know. Yeah. Uh, every decision that, every decision that I go to, to uh, uh, have a conversation with her, and she'll break open the books and run the numbers, right? You know, she's she's right on top of that stuff. She's the money manager, and I'm the guy that works. So <laughs> she keeps you, know. you accountable. That's good. You know it's your a, roles. It's a good. It's a it's an excellent combination that works, right? You yeah. know, and her love and support is 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 totally amazing. Yeah. To me, sometimes. Yeah. Tell you the truth, right? Yeah. You know. I like yeah. it. I like it's, it. It's, it's a it's a it's unbelievable. You know. Yeah. And yeah, you know, we've made some bad decisions, but in the end, it worked out, right? No. I always say there are three yeah. choices in life. There's a good choice, which obviously you want to make the first time. There's a bad choice, and then there's no choice at all. Running away from choices, I've done all three. Good choice is the best, but the bad choice right. is the second best choice if you learn from it. And I think uh, you've That's demonstrated that. Oh yeah. The worst thing you can do yeah, is not yeah, choose definitely. and not go for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like that saying goes, why do people fall? So they can learn to get back up. Yeah. 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 That's right. Wise words, yeah. my friend. So Motor, uh, the yeah. hour is quickly coming to a close and, and I, I just want to, I, you know, there's, they've already gleaned some stuff off of yourself and, and Kim, as you've come on as well from your experience, these are two guys that know what they're talking about. Uh, but Motor, you've seen the industry change over the years that you've been in transport. Um, I'm going to give you the last few minutes and, and just um, talk to us. What would you tell people in the industry today based on your experience? Um, you know, what's, what's on your heart these days? What message would you leave with people to be successful in the industry? Um, you know, uh, what, what would you like to say? Well, first of all, don't bite off more than you can chew. Like we were talking about earlier, the bling, yes. The bling is nice, but like I said, when I started out, I bought a truck I could afford and I, I built it up from there. So the bling, the bling is always a draw for a lot of guys like us. We like shiny, we like sparkly, you know, chicken lights and chrome. But, but I mean, you got bills to pay, you got maintenance to take care of. And like Wiley said, you know, it's not a regular job. You know, you don't go home Friday night. And if you're going to buy a truck, you're going to, you you own it. Yeah. And you have to own it. You have to take care of it. And, you know, the littlest of problems, fix them right away. Don't leave them faster because that little problem turns into a great big problem later. Yeah. So if you stay on your maintenance and everything else, you'll you'll never be on the side of the road. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, as far as the industry is going today, um, like Wiley was saying, and I agree, there's it's not a shortage of drivers, it's a shortage of drivers with experience. And I mean, you go back to the days of old when you know the old day truckers. Nothing's changed out there. Like everybody says, oh, it's getting worse. Well, it's not getting worse. It's just getting more population. Yes. We have the same problems. I mean, you watch the movie Convoy from years ago, and I mean, they talk about the same things you hear today. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing has changed. What, what has changed in the industry is our population and the traffic on the roads. So if it takes you 10 minutes longer to get to that truck stop, he's off the pedal. Yeah. You know, when the road conditions are bad, drive, drive accordingly. You know, you don't have to do 100 on the glare. I slow down because the next corner you come around, there's a pile up. How are you going to stop, right? You know, and we've seen it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just treat your fellow man and fellow trucker with respect. And you see a guy broke down. Everybody's got cell phones now, so a lot of people are less weary to pull over, but even if you just pull over and check on them and say, hey, buddy, did you make the call? You got somebody coming, you need a bottle of water, you know, just anything like that. So I think there's a lot of people out there that still do that. I've seen it. And, you know, yes. It's, but there, there could be more. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? To that point, Motor, the best way to, to see that happen in greater uh, amounts is to uh, be that person yourself. And the more person that are proactive and don't don't just wait for everyone else to to get a brain and get a heart, uh, the more people that just yeah. go out and do it, you, it tends to be a boomerang. And and what you give is what you get. And then all of a sudden there's this uh, this wave of knights on the road out there, and uh, and doing great things. Yeah. Motor, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your time today, um, and uh, I hope our, I know that our listeners will have gotten a lot out of our conversation. Uh, but I also appreciate you. Um, you're a friend. Uh, you're a model. Um, I'm going to read uh, just uh, a couple more uh, quotes uh, that people came into. Uh, and this one is from Mr. Whitehouse, who is Alberta Large Cars, uh, the head of that. He says, Motor, my friend, my brother of the road, we miss you here in Alberta. BC got an asset when you moved there. What can I say? Icon, legend, probably both. <laughs> but you are a big old bear with a heart of gold. You've seen a lot over the years, to name a few, uh, and uh, congratulations on your Canadian Driver of the Year. Something close to your heart, donating your, donating your rig time and money to the Rolling Barrage, and for that I do thank you for supporting our veterans, as we all should, and as well having a chopper chase you down the highway. I do believe we are dang near the same age, but I look up to you as a mentor <laughs> and an owner-operator that every driver should look up to. May you have much success in all you do, brother. All the best from Mr. Todd. Um, and then from a fine lady, Tina, up at Lesko Distributors, uh, oh, she says, yeah. 
Motor was the pioneer, if you will, of fine competitive Canadian iron. He inspired so many of the guys out here over the years to better and be better at the look of their trucks. There was a time when you opened a magazine and you couldn't help but see a picture of Motor's Freightliner. He is a legend in Canadian trucking, but don't let that go to your head, Motor. Lots of laughs, Tina. <laughs> oh. yeah, with, with your with your freight liner, you definitely made a fashion statement. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? In this industry, just like I said before, you know, like guys like Kim, Gord Cooper, Todd Hoyas, these guys, Tina, approach, yeah. you know, uh, Jason Gerton. I mean, I could go on. Tyler Rogers. Yeah. You know, like this. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. There's so many guys, like you know. Uh, just I, I could your show isn't long enough for me to go on with all the names I would say I respect and I look up to you know like you know it's 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 a wonder I, I I am blessed with all the people that I have met in my journeys and travels on the road and you know the Glenn family you know you go of course David you know John White from Pro Truck or yeah you know just Everything that I, every person that I've come across in this industry has been such an important part of my life. Yeah. And it is actually an important part of who I am because these people that are saying these kind words and, you know, Wiley owning in here, that was such a great surprise. And even like, like, like I said, when he came down, when we rolled through with the Rolling Barrage in Humboldt or whatever, you know, it just, these people are amazing too. Like you're sitting here praising me and I appreciate it and I love it. Thank you very much. But they're all the same too. And I, I, I really got to stress that, that those people give too. Like they, they give wherever they can. So I'm going to end uh, the, uh, the show with this thought. Trucking is better with family and family doesn't have to be blood. Absolutely. We are an amazing family as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You know? And I consider Wiley, all these people, everybody in here, that we're all family. So look out. For yeah. Them. All right. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Keep being who you are. Oh, and you. Um, I'm sure we'll connect uh, over the coming months. We'll talk to you soon. I want to thank Mike Motorose now for being on the show today. An amazing uh, guy, man, trucker. Uh, that we can all learn a lot from and for Kim Wiley for joining in in the last little bit and, and giving his thoughts, another veteran that we can learn so much from. I, I want to uh, conclude by kind of giving you my wow of the show and of that interview. And there were many of them for me, but this really stuck out. When Motor said this, he said, all of what I've done is because of where I came from. Wow, that, that phrase has many sides to it. It's absolutely true. We're the product of our environment, of where we grew up. And and uh, it's two sides because, you know, for some of you, you grew up in environments and, and I can raise my hand to that one. You don't see it, but it's on the radio. It is raised uh, where I was loved and supported and empowered and told that I could and, and treated well and, and felt safe and secure. Uh, but that's not everyone's environment growing up. Uh, and some of you didn't have the luxury of that. But my encouragement as you're driving down the road is that, um, you know, what happened in the past when you were young, uh, you had very little control over. And if you're over 18, uh, here's the scoop. Where, what you will do in the future is all because of where you put yourself today. And you've got full control of those choices. Next program, we're going to have three community leaders, people who bring people together. Uh, Maritime Pride and Ride, all of Big Rigs, No Limits, Alberta Large Cars, three groups that build communities that help truckers thrive. And if you didn't have that supportive environment in the past, it doesn't mean that you can't choose it as soon as today. And so join us next time, drive safe. Thank you for who you are and thank you for what you do. God bless.